Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and this is the spotlight on VMware Backup and Recovery. We're here with Mike Crystal, who is the Systems and Enterprise Architect for Server and Storage at St. Charles Health. Mike, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, Dave, for having me. Good to see you. We're here at uh, VMworld. We're talking off camera about uh, all the action that's going on here. Um, first of all, what are your impressions? Excellent show, excellent show. Just a it is the show now, isn't it? it mm. It's pretty cool. If you're into virtualization, yeah. it's a place to be, so. Yeah, who's not into virtualization? Come on, I mean, as a practitioner, it's totally changed your life, hasn't it? It, it has, I mean, we, um, I don't think we would uh, be able to continue to grow our business if we didn't have virtualization. You know, staff's expensive, machines are expensive. You, you got to do something about it, and virtualization is definitely the way to do it. So talk a little bit about uh, St. Charles Health, and then we'll get into uh, what you guys are doing in storage. Sure, um, St. Charles Health is um, a regional healthcare provider in Central Oregon. Um, we have uh, four hospitals that, that we're responsible for, a slew of uh, doctor's offices and clinics. Um, we're the largest employer in Central Oregon with about 3,000 employees. Um, we are uh, on the road to virtualization like everyone else. Um, we have about 700 servers, uh, 450, so a little over half of those are, are virtualized. And um, in terms of the applications, um, you heavily virtualized, working your way up? This We're working our way up. You know, we took the, the low-hanging fruit, you know, when we got started, you know, the, the legacy applications that were, were easy, but uh, over the last two years, we've really started to, to concentrate on those uh, business-critical applications. Uh, a good deal of our uh, current EHR and our ambulatory care um, applications are virtualized. So are you on vSphere 5? We are on uh, 4.1 uh, right now. 4.1, and, and planning to go to 5, or? Especially after we uh, heard, heard some interesting news yesterday in the keynote about uh, VRAM. So we are excited to, to, to hear oh, that. VRAM uh, pricing, yes, yay. Yes, yeah. So that had to make you happy. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I think that makes everyone happy. Yeah, so. yeah okay, so that'll, that'll be a catalyst. Right. Big, big catalyst, and then um, uh, we are uh, taking one of the, our main databases that we were unable to virtualize um, due to sort of vendor specs uh, over the last couple of years, and th we're going to do it this year. And uh, we need those uh, specs that you know 5.0 and, and I guess 5.1 are going to support. So we need to be able to put you know more than eight virtual CPUs. So so it's a big deal for you guys. I mean, you guys are in the business of saving lives. I mean, <laughs> so, so definitely, if you can if you can spend more money on you know care versus you know infrastructure, that's a good thing for everybody, right? Oh, it's, so. a, it's a great thing for everybody. S so. Um, Talk about uh, backup. You know, we've talked a lot on theCUBE about how virtualization stresses storage generally and backup specifically. What was your experience when you started to get heavily into virtualization in terms of the impact that it had on your backup? Sure, well, we, we just really weren't prepared. I mean, um, you know, it's a whole different paradigm uh, backing up in, in the virtual world. You know, we, we're taking the traditional have a client you know, on a device, back it up on a certain window and, and, and call it good and we were doing that to tape. Um, and what we found, and I think what most people find in a situation like that is, is we had to build our, uh, our ESX servers um, in such a way as to, to support our peak backup times. Um, caused lots of problems in the organization. Uh, we're going over our backup windows, and we needed something to address that. And so uh, we uh, went to the marketplace and we found Avamar and, and Data Domain from EMC. So we've been Super happy to have that. So you essentially were were not hitting your backup window. So you had a you know, tr what, your traditional backup system uh, that you had had for how many years? I mean, was ten, it? ten years. You know, we, so I've seen some data. We have Jason Buffington on a little later from ESG, and, and I've seen some data that a, a, a number of companies have refreshed their their backup, and they've actually relooked at it. And I presume virtualization was a big catalyst. It clearly was for you all, right? It, it was. It was. And, and we also had a, um, a, a data center optimization program that was going on where we moved data centers and it really kind of uh, exposed you know, just what our problems were. Um, you know, we, we were replicating data with our old backup system and it was taking two days to replicate the changes from one data center to the, to the other. Yeah. Um, we couldn't meet any of our RPOs or RTOs if we'd lost a data center. So you, 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 you know, expose that to the board and people get a little little tense and they, they say get out there and, and fix it. Fix it, yeah, so um, now, okay, so you, you chose a, a solution that includes both Avamar and Data Domain. Can you talk about the use case for each and why you deployed that way? Sure, um, 
you know, from, from a front end perspective to us, it's seamless. So, you know, we use uh, Avamar as sort of the, the UI, um, you know, and, and, and uh, the data domain sort of sits, sits behind that. Um, so that, that's how it kind of came into the, to the, uh, the, the organization. But once we got in and we started to, to deploy, what we found was uh, we could uh, have the data domain as a, uh, as a target uh, for uh, backups. And uh, so what we, we ended up doing is um, instead of changing the way our uh, Oracle backups were running, we just swapped it, you know, the data domain in. So you know, we were uh, backing up basically to an NFS mount and then scraping that data off into off, off onto virtual tape. Um, so what we do now is just back up directly to the data domain. And what, we, what happened is um, those backup times shrunk, and then the the restore times. It's it's a phenomenal difference on, on restore. You guys were talking in the segment before this, uh, just about you know why that is. But you know we were having jobs that took 12 hours to do restore that now maybe take us an hour and a half. So it, it's made a big impact so on the business. You, can you elaborate on, on on why that is? Why are the restore times so much superior? I think there's a couple of things. I think Steven spoke to, to quite a lot about you know how the data is actually put down on, on a device. But yeah. you know from, from our perspective, um, we don't have to send that that stream compressed anymore and then uncompress it as it goes back down. I mean, as far as our man's concerned, it's just a straight backup. So you don't have to hydrate and rehydrate. Exactly. Rehydrate. It's exactly. Just, it's just transparent. Yeah. And then it's all on spinning disk. So you know that. Yeah, it's not serial. So, are you virtualizing Oracle, just as an aside? We, we are. We are. Damn the torpedoes and yep. virtualize Oracle. Yep, Good move. Bet. We've advised that, that uh, the benefits outweigh the risk. Have you had any issues with that? Or? We uh, are only in, in uh, uh, some test dev right now mm -hmm. uh, with what we're doing, but the, the database that we, we've talked about is uh, this year is the one we're going to concentrate on, on getting moved to production. So okay, so excited about it. So talk about the the project, if you will, where you sort of deployed this this backup solution. Can you can you take us through kind of briefly the sort of you know the planning and design phase, and then the implementation? And I want to get to you know what what you'd do differently if you had to do it again. What advice you'd give to practitioners? But sure. take us through, paint a picture of what, what actually happened there. Well, I mean, we had a we had a problem. You know, we, we described that, so we got identified people's it, attention. got people's attention, um, developed a, a, a series of, of um, requirements, went to the marketplace, started doing due diligence, talked to people out there, hey, what else are you doing? Talked to folks like Gartner, said, hey, what, you know, here's our problem, what should we do? We basically narrowed it down to, to four separate vendors, one of which was incumbent, you know, the, the, the company we were using already, and, and looked at, um, you know, the, the dollars and cents of the situation. So it really ended up coming down to the incumbent te technology and to Avamar Data Domain. So if we left our incumbent technology in place, we were going to spend $1.3 million over a, a four-year period to upgrade the system and keep it running steady state. Um, so we make an acquisition, or, or make an acquisition with Avamar Data Domain, we could do that for under a million dollars, or and like $940,000 saving $300,000, so essentially the system paid for itself. And we went to the board and said, hey, I have an ROI of less than three years. You don't have to take money out of your pocket. It was already in the budget. Um, and it solves all the problems we talked about. So that was pretty much a slam dunk. They, they picked it up and, and went from there. So then as far as the, uh, the actual uh, project itself, we brought in um, EMC Professional Services, and they assisted us with, with doing the, the install, which was very smooth. I mean, we did 700 agents, um, and and didn't didn't have a single downtime. So it was it was a great experience. So for 700 us. agents. 700 agents. Yes. Uh, okay. So, um, so you, so the <laughs> the ROI was basically you know ROI right benefit over the cost of the benefit that if you lower the denominator you're going to get a better ROI right. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. that was uh, that was pretty straightforward. How has it impacted your business? You talked a, a little bit about you know, meeting backup windows and recovery times. Can you, can you give us some color on that? Maybe some metrics that, that you'd use and maybe talk about the recoveries that you've sure. done. Sure. Um, you know, I mentioned a, a little bit about the replication, you know, going from taking over two days to, to down to just, just a few, few hours. I think a, a 10 to 12 hours is, is what it's taking now. Um, we essentially got a, an FTE back 
um, by, by uh, deploying the solution. So instead of spending you know, time figuring out what failed, why it failed, rerunning, out, you know, rerunning that back up again, locating tapes, doing reclamation, all that work is gone. So big, big, big change, change there. Um, so you know, that's really where the, the concrete savings it, are. And the FTE wasn't in the, was not in the business case. Is that right? We didn't include that in the business case. Did not. Yeah, because if, you know, if you do, yeah, uh, then, gonna, then you have to get rid of the FTE. Yeah, so, right. so, exactly. Okay, but so ultimately that led to greater productivity and Correct. did other things with that person. And then the in that nearly a million to nine hundred thousand plus dollars, you, that included the deployment cost, the professional services piece. It, 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 did. it did. It did. So it was a, a huge. Huge, huge savings for us, and and really a no-brainer. So, any any learnings that you can share with your peers, or things that you might do differently, or advice that you might give them? Sure. Uh, I think one of the, the the biggest difficulties we we had, and and I think it's probably more relational than anything else, was that, you know, Avamar and Data Domain were relatively recent acquisitions to EMC, and so the 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 communication pipeline wasn't necessarily there um, to begin with, as far as um, we had some difficulties with the, just the sheer number of VMs that we that we had, and um, trying to get them backed up in, in that right window and get them re replicated in the right window. So um, we were able to work with engineering and get all that solved, but it, it just took it took a little bit of of uh, relationship help, and okay. we had a great sales team who was willing to do that. So it was it was a good thing. So just. Good, good service, attentive. But uh, any advice that you give to other practitioners looking to to try to solve their their backup problems? Um, you know, do 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 your due diligence. You know, find, figure out what your use case is. Go to the market and um, you know do your homework. But I, I think if you do, the, I, the our solution is probably going to work for you. So, excellent. All right. Well, Mike, thank you very much. Uh, great story. Uh, appreciate your insights. Thanks for coming on the cube and uh, and sharing them with our audience. And uh, good to meet you. Great, it was great meeting you. All right, Thanks. take care. All right, thanks everybody. Uh, keep it right there. We'll be right back with Jason Buffington uh, from ESG. We're live, SiliconANGLE's coverage from VMworld 2012. We'll be right back. <laughs>